Hello everyone. Praise God from whom all blessings flow and happy Resurrection Day. While this Resurrection Day may be different than any Resurrection Day we've ever experienced before because of what's going on in the world today, we just need to be reminded that God is still in control and he will deliver us because he has the whole world in his hands. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today, and our word today is going to come from the gospel according to St. John. And we're going to read from the 17th chapter of St. John. John chapter 17, beginning at verse 20. John 17, beginning at verse 20. And the word of God reads, and I'm reading from the New King James. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. Amen. Today, brothers and sisters, I would like to reason with you from this topic. He loved us with the cross. Pray with me. Eternal and all-wise God, we come to you once again, Lord, just to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to celebrate the risen Savior. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son to die on Calvary's cross for us so that we may have the right to eternal life. So for that, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father. And my prayer today is that you will give me the physical strength and give me the, the humility and the power and the authority to speak your word. And as always, Lord, my prayer is that you'll let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, he loved us with the cross. Now, I believe that love is best understood from the cross. When the world talks about love, they miss the mark. The word love is used and overused so much that it has pretty much lost its meaning. And it's become a cliche. I love my shoes. I love my dog. I love Aunt Susie's sweet potato pie. It's just become something that you say. And people don't really know what love is anymore. When Tina Turner asked the question, what's love got to do with it? We know that love is not just a secondhand emotion. In fact, love is not an emotional state at all. It's a choice that you make. 
Love is a commitment. Jesus was committed to us at the cross. Love is an action word because Jesus told us that if you love me, keep my commandments. Something that you do to demonstrate your love. There's action associated with it. And the Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when we were blind, when we were oblivious, when we were downright rebellious to the things of God, when we were on our way to hell, about to knock the bottom of hell out, wearing gasoline shorts, he loved us. He loved us. Even when we're not right with the Lord, he's always right with us. But I'm here to tell you there is nothing, nothing, nothing like the love of Jesus. His love is unique. It's unique in all of history. His love is agape love. It is sacrificial. It is unconditional. It is committed. It is faithful. And it doesn't expect anything in return. Hallelujah. It's the kind of love that Jesus wants us to have towards each other. Our text this morning is about love. And it's about the cross. And it's about unity. It's part of a prayer that Jesus prays to the Father. And some have said that this prayer in John 17 is the greatest prayer ever prayed on earth. And the greatest prayer recorded anywhere in scripture. Jesus prays this prayer after the Last Supper just before all the events that would take him to the cross, just before he's betrayed, just before he is arrested, just before he's illegally tried and condemned, just before he's beaten unmercifully, and before he endured the agony and the suffering on the cross at Calvary. Knowing what he's about to face, he prays for himself. He prays for his disciples and he prays for us, for you and for I. All those who believe in him, he prays for. And there's some truths in this powerful prayer that I just want to point out to you today. As Jesus is praying to the Father in verse 23, he says, You love them as you loved me. In verse 26, Jesus says that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Now let that, let that marinate for a second. Let that just soak in for a moment. In other words, the Father loved us, all believers, just like he loved his son, Jesus. That means if you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, God the Father loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. Hallelujah. Knowing that Jesus and the Father are one, this means that Jesus also loves us as much as he loves the Father. What was being said in the original language is that he loved us just like he loved the Father. That's powerful. And it's not just that he loves us with an everlasting love, which is enough to make you want to shout hallelujah by itself. He loves us as much as he loves God the Father. Not only that, when Jesus prays about the glory that the Father has given him and how he wants us to behold that glory, what is the glory that Jesus is talking about? What is the glory that Jesus wants us to behold? He wants us to be a witness to the most remarkable event, the most remarkable event in all of human history. The glory is the cross. 
Jesus puts it all together in this text. His love for us and his love for the cross. It's never been more connected than it is right here in the text. He loved us with the cross. You see, all through his life, all through his life, Jesus had been trying to tell the world how much he loved it. For God so loved the world. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. But the world didn't understand him. The world didn't believe him. All through his life, Jesus had been trying to communicate the death of his love to the world. Jesus said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He performed many miracles, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, causing the lame to walk, raising the dead. But nothing he said or did showed the world his love like the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus, his dying on the cross, was not an accident. It was not an afterthought. It was part of a plan created before the foundation of the world. Jesus was on a mission. He was on a mission. He came down from heaven to be born in Bethlehem, to walk among us as a man who knew no sin, and to die in our place. His entire purpose for coming to the earth was to die. Jesus died to pay a debt he didn't owe because we owed a debt we couldn't pay. Jesus carried out the plan that had been in place before time began. The plan used everyday ordinary people, sometimes weak people, sometimes broken circumstances, recorded throughout history to accomplish his purpose. He took Abraham and Sarah, an old, childless couple, and told them that through them a great nation would be built, and that their offspring would be multiplied like stars in the sky or like grains of sand at the beach. He took a backstabbing trickster named Jacob, picked him up, turned him around, and changed his name to Israel and said Israel would be the name of that great nation. And he gave him sons to make up all the tribes of the nation. He orchestrated all the events that allowed one of the sons, Joseph, to be abandoned and sold into slavery by his brothers. Joseph says what was meant for evil, God meant for good. And the nation was kept from destruction and the nation grew. He used a young man named David to defeat a giant with a slingshot and some stones. He makes him a king. And even though he was a backslider and his reign as king was filled with adversity and suffering, God regards David as a man after his own heart. God promises David that the Messiah would come through his lineage and that the Messiah would establish a kingdom that would live on forever. Then he talks to the prophet Isaiah and reveals prophecy about a servant who would come to offer up a sacrificial atonement. In chapter 53 of the book of Isaiah, the prophecy says that this servant has no form nor comeliness, has no beauty that we should desire him, is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, is acquainted with grief, we esteemed him not, but he bore all of our griefs. He carried all of our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 700 years later, 700 years later, Jesus the Christ comes and fulfills the prophecy. Everything, everything points to Jesus. 
He carries out his mission on earth. And just before he's about to die, he says, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He wasn't talking about going to heaven. He was talking about going to the cross. John 12, 33 confirms that Jesus knew how he was going to die. It was all part of God's redemptive plan. It was a great thing, a great thing that he did for me. It was a great thing that he did for you. The great thing that he did for the world. He loved us with the cross. The question is, why? Why? Why does he love us so much when we can be so unlovable, when we can be so unfaithful, when we can be so hard-headed? He died in our place because of all of our funky sins, past, present, and future. I can't, I can't get my mind around this. And my sermon title comes from the song, He Loved Me With The Cross. And there's a line in that song that goes, And I could not imagine what loving me would cost. My Jesus went to Calvary and loved me with the cross. I can't imagine, oh wretched man that I am. I know me and so does Jesus. And he, guess what? He knows you too. But he loves you in spite of what he knows. You know, there's a story, a story I heard about a man who was out with his wife. And while they were out, they got caught up in a terrible, terrible hailstorm. This was a massive, massive hailstorm. The hail was as large as baseballs. As the hail was coming down, the man realized that if he didn't do something, his wife would be hurt badly. He quickly draped himself over her, covering her with his own body so that instead of the storm hitting her, it was hitting him. And it seemed like the hailstones were getting bigger and coming down harder. And the man was getting beat up by the hailstones as he bent over his wife. After a couple of minutes, his ears and other parts of his body started to bleed as he bent over his wife. And he had some spots on his head that were, that were opening up. And he tried to lead his wife to a safer place, but the stones were coming down harder and faster. And he got weaker and weaker. And he finally just collapsed over his wife, using his body to shield her from the danger. After the storm was over, the man was left with scars from where the hail had beat him and battered him. And the leftover scars, sores, cuts, and abrasions would always be reminders to him of the day that he saved his wife. This is a true story. One of the local news programs interviewed the man's wife and asked her how she felt about this experience. And she said, every time I look at the scars on his head, every time I look at the scars on his neck, every time I look at the scars on his ear, I love him even more. Every time I see the stars, I love him more because he sacrificed himself for me. Brothers and sisters, when you and I go to heaven, Jesus will be the only person in eternity with scars. He will have holes in his hands, holes in his feet, and a hole in his side. And it will be our eternal reminder that the only reason we're there is because he stood between the wrath of God and the judgment that was meant for us. Hallelujah. He covered you with his love and allowed none of the hail to damage you. This is the love of Christ. He loved us so much. He was disfigured for us. He loved us so much that he died for us. Jesus loved us with the cross. Because of love, 
Jesus willingly allowed the Roman soldiers to lead him to Golgotha Hill to a place called Calvary. Because of love, Jesus willingly allowed himself to be mocked, allowed himself to be spit upon, allowed himself to be beat up all night long. Because of love, a crown of thorns was placed on his head. Because of love, Jesus withstood the nail spikes in his hands, the nail spikes in his feet, and being hung on the cross. Oh yes, oh yes. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head and for you and for me, he died. But hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not how the story ends because early, early one Sunday morning, before the break of day, the stone rolled away. The ground began to shake and heaven rejoiced because he got up. He got up. And when he got up, he rose with all power in his hands. He had loving power. He had redeeming power. He had saving power. He had Holy Ghost power. So today, today we have hope. In the midst of his uncertainty, we have hope because we can be confident of his love. We have hope in the midst of confusion because his love makes everything clear. We have hope in the midst of fear because, because of his love. We know that we already have the victory. We have hope in the midst of hopelessness because with his love, we share a hope that is only found in the empty tomb. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for giving us your only son to die in our place so that we would have the right to eternal life. And if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't given your life to him, do it today. He has provided a way a way of forgiveness and salvation for you through his loving act on the cross. Because of what he did on the cross, even now, even now, over 2,000 years later, all across the country, all across the world, men, women, boys and girls fall down on their knees to worship him and to praise him. And one day, one day, when he comes back at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you and may heaven Smile upon you. He loved us. He left a throne the cross. in heaven to come to Bethlehem. And I will not forget the way he loved me. He spoke with words of love that said he'd go to any distance to show what I was worthy of. And when at last that dusty road
Steve. 